Hey everyone, it's Ms. Mayorga. Here is the video for lesson eight, Sprite Property. So again, as usual, just make sure you have the notebook open and you're logged into Code Studio. Let's go ahead and get started. Lesson eight, Sprite Properties. The essential question for this lesson is, how can we use Sprite Properties to change their appearance on the screen? So last class, we learned how to put sprites and animations onto our screen. Now we're gonna learn how to change their appearance. Learning objective, use dot notation to update a sprite's property. So we're going to be learning these four blocks, rotation, scale, sprite uh, x, sprite y. Um, and as you go through the lesson, here's an example. Um, this is afterwards if you want to take a look at it. This is an example of how to change things around. But as you go through the lesson, you're welcome to come back to the notebook and look at sides 14 and 15 to review what these different sprite properties do. All right. Uh, so that's there for a resource as we move forward. But let's go ahead and get started. Lesson eight. Open it up, going to bubble one. All right, lesson eight. So again, these are the four blocks we are uh, introducing this lesson. Go ahead and continue. Okay. Uh, oops, I did not mean to select anything here. I didn't want to select anything. Um, okay, look at the code below and predict where the B sprite will appear. All right, ignore my choice. I didn't mean to click on here, so don't actually ignore my choice. All right, so let's take a look at the code. Variable B create sprite. It originally says 200 comma 200. B dot set animation, so the picture is setting uh, an animation. And then B dot X gets 350, b.y gets 350. So where do you think on the screen, where is that going to show up? The middle of the screen, bottom right corner, uh, two b's, one in the middle, one on the bottom right, three b's, all in different places or nothing, there will be an error. So what do you think? Okay, hopefully you selected or thought maybe that it would be in the bottom right hand corner. So what this is saying, actually we'll discover what it's saying, but what it's saying is um, b dot x, so the variable b, we're gonna set the x to 350 and the y to 350. So the position is going to be right around, I'm looking for 350, right around, ooh, super close, I might not be able to get it. Oh, yeah, it won't let me get it, but right around here. So it's gonna be in the bottom right corner. All right, go ahead and click run. And you should see that it's in the bottom right corner. Nice job. Finish. Continue on. Oh, and I forgot to review for this lesson. We're going to be working on bubbles one through six. Uh, bubble five will do both activities. Bubble six will be created and bubble seven will be an optional challenge. All right, so let's continue. Bubble three, sprite properties. Sprite properties keep track of all the information your program needs to know about a sprite, such as its size and location. You can change the values of these properties just like you do variables and see results when your sprite is drawn to the screen. Do this, run the program to see where the sprites appear. Change the X and Y properties of the paintbrush sprite to move it to the palette. All right, so let's just run the program. There we go, so we have our paintbrush and we have our palette. And our task is to change the X and Y property so that the paintbrush is closer to the palette. So go ahead and take a look at your code. There are two variables that we have. We have palette and brush. Which of these four blocks do we need to change so that the brush moves closer to the palette? And hopefully you said brush.x and brush.y. So Right now, uh, the center of that sprite is at 300 comma 100. We probably want the center to come down to, if we move our mouse and look at the coordinates that show up here, uh, maybe right about here. So that's like 175, 225. So X equals 175, Y equals 225. All right, 175, 225. And make sure you're changing it uh, for the brush variable, your brush sprite, okay? And there we go much closer to the palette. You can use slightly different variables, uh, sorry, slightly different values if you would like to move it uh, in a different location. But as long as you bring it closer to the palette, you're good. Click finish. All 
sorry, I'm just looking at the delivery truck right outside. They're delivering something kind of, it looks like a refrigerator, maybe? Yes. Okay, new properties. Sprites have lots of properties. Check out the two new blocks in this activity and try them out for yourself. Notice that different sprites can use the same animation and still look different because of properties. Do this, run the program to see how the rotation and scale blocks make the first two notes look different. All right, so here we have the uh, second two notes look the same, but the first two notes look different. Think about what's different about them. What's different? Yeah, so one of them is smaller. Actually, I think they might both, they're both smaller and they're rotated. So do this, use the rotation and scale blocks on the last two notes to make them look different too. Okay, so if we take a look at our uh, code, we have note one, note two, note three, note four. So note one has this note one dot scale set to 0 0.3, which made it a lot smaller, and note one rotation to 20. So it shifted the, um, the note 20 degrees uh, clockwise. And then note two had a note two dot scale 0 0.7. It made it smaller, not as small, but it still made it smaller. And then a note two dot rotation gets negative 30. That made the note rotate counterclockwise uh, 30 degrees, All right? So we wanna do the same thing for note three and four. So let's look for our scale block. That's gonna be in our sprites drawer right here. Sprite dot scale. Bring it down after note three dot set animation. Make sure you change that label. The label should match the label of the variable or the sprite that you want to change. So here we want to change note three. So that should be note three. And let's go ahead and make that smaller. Uh, this time I'm going to go with 0 0.5, right? They did 0 0.3, 0 0.7. I'm going to go with 0 0.5. Now let's run the program. And as you can see, it got smaller. And I'm gonna go ahead and rotate it clockwise. So I need sprite dot rotation. Drop it right there. Don't forget to change the label. And this time, let's see, let me look at my notes. The first one, note one was 20 degrees. I'm gonna make this one 35. Mm, I don't know if I like that. Maybe I'll just make it 10. Or should I go negative? Yeah, so just play around. I mean, like you see I'm doing, I'm just playing around with the values to see what I actually like. Uh, maybe I'll go positive 15. I don't know, I'm just playing around with the different values. Choose a value that you like. Sure, I'll keep it at 15. Choose a value that you like, and then go ahead and repeat the same process, scale and dot rotation for note four. Pause the video, come back. Okay, welcome back. So you might have chosen different values. I'm just gonna choose um, random values here. So sprite.scale, make sure that says note four. And this time I want it to be big, but not all the way big. So I'm gonna go ahead and go say 0 0.8. Or maybe I should make it even smaller, 0. One, that's gonna be super tiny. Yes, yeah, too tiny. Okay, maybe 0 0.4. Sure, that works. 0 0.4 and I'm gonna do sprite.rotation and this time I'm gonna go with a negative value. So it's rotates counterclockwise. Don't forget to change, note four. And I want it to go counterclockwise, so I'm gonna go negative 40. There we go, nice. So again, we added these two blocks, the scale and rotation properties for note three and note four. Awesome, let's go ahead and continue. Level five, so here I asked you to do both activities. Let's go ahead and do activity A. Scale property. The scale property changes the size of, size of the sprite. Scale of one is the normal size. Scale of two is twice as big and a scale of 0 0.5 is half as big. So basically, if it's equal to one, you're, if you're, that means you're multiplying everything by one. 
when you multiply everything by one, it stays the same. So the size of every part of your image is going to stay the same. When you scale something and multiply by something greater than one, it's going to make things bigger, right? When you scale something and you multiply by a decimal between zero and one, it's going to make it smaller. Um, so do this. Use the scale property to make it look like the picture. Make sure that each animal is as big as it should be. Make sure the fish fits in the pond. All right, so let's run. Um, and let's try to figure out how to make these smaller. So we want it to look like the picture. The fish should fit in the pond. Okay, let's start with the cow. I'm gonna bring the cow smaller. Right now it's the normal size. Since I want it to be smaller, should I pick a number greater than one or less than one? Hopefully you said less than one. Yeah, so I'm gonna start with 0 0.7 just to see. Mm, no, it still looks quite big. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring that down to 0 0.5, so half the size. Um, I think that's about right. Yeah, it looks about right. Okay. And now I'm gonna go to the fish. So I'm gonna go up to the fish right here. And I need to make it small enough so it fits in the, in the blue circle in the pond. What do you think? What value should we use here? Go ahead and test it out and then double check with me. You might use a slightly different number. I'm going to go ahead and go with 0 0.3. A little too small, maybe a little too small. Okay, 0 0.4. Poor fish. There we go. You could probably even do 0 0.5. Yeah, you could do 0 0.5. Okay, so we've got two of them down. Now we need to fix the fly and the elephant. So let's go ahead and fix the fly. That still needs to be smaller, not super small, but smaller. So I'm going to go with 0 0.5 again. Let's see what happens. That works, right? It looks very similar to the picture. You could go a little bit smaller if you wanted to. And now we just need to fix the elephant. The elephant can't be touching the cow. It's got to be a little bit smaller. So let's go ahead and fix the elephant doesn't have to be too much smaller, so I'm going to go with 0 0.8. Maybe 0 0.7. There we go. Yeah, I think they might have used 0 0.75 because the feet get cut off. Yeah, there we go. Either way, as long as it looks similar to the picture, you're good, right? The idea is that you're practicing the scale property. To make it smaller, you use a decimal. To make it bigger, you use a number greater than one. All right, go ahead and click Finish. Continue. And now let's take a look at the rotation property. Hopefully we can get through activity B. I might have to do, I think I will have to do a second video to explain uh, bubble six, but that's okay. All right, rotation. Rotation, the dot rotation sprite property rotates an image between zero and 360 degrees. The image is rotated clockwise. Right, so when you use positive 0 to 360, it'll rotate clockwise to the right. For example, my sprite dot rotation equals 90 will rotate it one quarter rotation to its right. So that 90 degrees, it'll be a right turn. Do this. Add dot rotation blocks to the code to make all of the cars look like they are traveling correctly down the roads. All right. So here we have to fix the orange and the yellow car. All right, orange and yellow car. We want the yellow to be uh, rotated to the right just a little bit, and then the orange to be rotated uh, one full right turn. So let's go ahead and check it out. We have car on the top, car on the left, car on the bottom, car on the right. Okay, so let's fix the car on the left. Car on the left. They call it red. That looks like orange to me. All right, car on the left, sprite.rotation. And make sure that the label is the same, car left. And right now it's facing up completely. We want it to rotate 90 degrees, a complete right angle. So I'm gonna go ahead and put 90 and test it. There we go. And I'm running out of time, so I'm sorry if I'm rushing through this. So the last one is car right. Make sure that matches. And this is going to be, let's see, just a little bit, maybe 45 degrees. There we go. All right. I'm going to go ahead and pick up on bubble six in part two of this video. All right. See you in part two.